All right, so a lot of us know that we're iron deficient. I see people all the time that are iron deficient, patients all the time. The key is how do we go from iron deficient to iron sufficient, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wanna mention five different food substances that will greatly slow down your capacity to go from iron insufficiency to iron sufficiency. And those would be wheat, eggs, soy, pro the protein specifically, and cow milk, as well as coffee. So basically four proteins from eggs, soy, wheat, cow's milk, and then coffee. I know, so unfortunate, right? So the deal is uh, cow's milk, specifically the casein portion of it, which makes up like 80% of what's in your cow milk, decreases not only iron absorption, but um, it can also, cow's milk by drinking it can decrease the uh, utilization of iron and overall, you know, just the consumption of iron because, because dairy or cow dairy, cow milk is such a low source of iron. Like there's, there's not really any iron in it in cow milk. Uh, so if we're consuming a lot of cow dairy, and this is especially important for children or in even, uh, in infants who are on, uh, cow milk formulas or, or just being given cow's milk up to, you know, a couple years old, because, you know, if you consume over 13 ounces, anywhere between 13 and 20 ounces, that's considered excessive amount of dairy input, of cow, cow milk input. And your chances as a little toddler, a little, little, little nugget to be iron deficient is actually really, really high. And I've seen this happen before. You know, kids getting super anemic, iron deficient because of dairy input. Um, and you know that, you know, low iron has increased risk of febrile seizures. My child had a febrile seizure once, terrible experience, you don't want that. Um, even though it's generally not a uh, you know, long-term uh, native impact on the child, it's still just traumatizing to the parents mostly. So uh, yeah, I mean, casein inhibits. Uh, so the first part is you drink dairy and it slows down. You know, there's just not enough iron in that. So you're just like consuming all these calories that are iron deficient, right? And you're already iron deficient. And then um, the absorption part, comes in where you know casein inhibits iron absorption and then calcium can increase can inhibit iron absorption by almost 50 percent that's a lot of inhib inhibition right there right <clears throat> and then we have the part where for a lot of people dairy cow dairy especially um you know ultra, ultra pasteurized homogenized just highly processed cow dairy can lead to um bleeding in the gut and then you're losing you know this micro bleeds you're actually losing iron excreting iron via this micro bleeding. And you know, if this happened for a you know, six month old, 12 month old, 18 month old, that can be really serious and you lose a, lose a lot of iron that way. That can be one way, um, you know, you give them all this milk and you're doing a good thing for them. And in fact, you know, they're just losing iron all the time via that process. So you gotta consider that. And then, uh, you know, when it comes to coffee intake for the adults, hopefully there's not too many children uh, consuming loads and loads of coffee, but coffee can decrease iron absorption by upwards of 40%. So if you are iron deficient and you're, you know, hammering coffee all day long because you're just exhausted, um, you know, same thing with black tea, green tea, those can do the same thing. If you're consuming all this caffeine or caffeinated beverages all day long, thinking you're trying to help yourself out, keep yourself going through the day, um, and yet you're iron deficient and you're pumping iron at the same time, one, you're going to be taking loads and loads of iron. That's going to that's gonna be caustic. It's cause a lot of inflammation in your digestive tract. Uh, and you're not going to get what you need from that iron because of all this, you know, all day long coffee. Now, if you drink coffee one time during the day, you have one set apart season, and then you give yourself, you know, four hours or so around that when you take your iron, you should be okay. But uh, if you're drinking coffee all day long, you know, like I talked to a patient today, you know, drinking like quad shot in the morning, quad shot in the afternoon, coffee, just drip coffee throughout the day, that's gonna be a problem. Your iron levels are not gonna go up because, uh, Absorption is gonna be massively hindered, up you know, forty percent. And iron's already so challenging to get in the body, even with the best types like blood vitality. It's still super challenging uh, to get into the into our bodies. Uh, so we want to open up every avenue possible. And one way to do that, if you are really iron deficient, is consider: okay, when am I having my dairy? When am I having you know soy products? When am I having egg products? When am I having wheat products? Uh, and consider that you know a lot of times the egg, soy, wheat products are in all kinds of processed foods. So you got to make sure, you know, if you're eating like two eggs in the morning, taking your iron at, at lunchtime, it's not gonna be a problem. But uh, if you're eating two eggs and then you're having your iron, that could be a problem. Or if you're eating, you know, processed crackers and chips and cookies and all this kind of stuff, 
you could end up, you know, eating wheat products, eating soy products, eating egg products all day long, including the dairy. Next thing you know, I mean, you have all these signals to stop iron absorption going on 24 seven. And you're wondering why am I taking massive doses of iron, having all this GI upset, feeling terrible, not seeing any results. My ferritin is just, it's not going anywhere. And it's just because these foods are getting in all day long. So consider the eggs, the soy, the wheat, the dairy, the dairy milk, especially the milk part of, of cow dairy and uh, your coffee intake. And let's make, let's make some ground and get your ferritin level up so you can experience life at its fullest. All right, Dr. Matt, please let me know any questions, comments, things you're, you're thinking about, considerations you're having related to iron, iron deficiency. Love to hear about them below.